time that's good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm okay. Good. My name is Lindsay. I'm the speech pathologist. Um, according to your history, I talked with your nurse. Um, she was saying that uh, you came in with COPD exacerbation, some <coughs> difficulty breathing. Is that true? Yeah, it's been it's been a little bit hard to breathe lately. Okay. Yeah. And before we get started, can you tell me your name and your date of birth? It's Jamie Foster, um, in twelve ninety. Okay. And then I'm gonna check the wristband. You want to make sure you're doing the procedure on the right patient. Okay. All right. So have you been having some difficulty swallowing? Um, I don't know. Every now and then, I guess, but not too much. Can you tell me what what it kind of feels like or what your symptoms are? Well, every now and then it feels like something kind of gets stuck in my throat, but usually if I cough or take a drink or pop it, it goes away. Okay, can you point to where you feel like it's getting stuck? Um, well, it kind of moves, but mostly like right around here, kind of gets stuck there, but like again, I usually can get it down. Okay, all right. How long has this been happening? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, maybe about a couple years, I guess. Just kind of got used to it. Okay. And in the past year, have you had recurrent episodes of pneumonia? <clears throat> well, I think I had pneumonia when I was when I was a kid, but uh, not not too. I can't remember. Maybe I have. I don't know. Okay. All right. Good to know. Now at home, um, do you eat whatever you want, or do you have to eat softer foods? What What's your typical diet? Well, I think I eat basically everything I want. It depends on what people cook for me sometimes, or what the kids bring over. Or, yeah, but mostly everything I want. Okay. All right, good to know. Um, before we get started here with our evaluation, I'm gonna have you do some things with your mouth and your face, and I'm gonna make sure everything's moving like I'd like to see them move, okay? Okay. So the first thing I want you to do, I just want you to smile really big, and we're looking for symmetry here, guys, okay? If you start seeing any droop, and especially if you haven't read it in the chart that there was a droop, you need to notify someone immediately because they could be having instant symptoms of a stroke, okay? I've had that happen one time to me. Um, where I thought, I don't remember reading that, and that's why it's important to do a case history review before you go in. Because if I went in blind and I see a facial droop, then I'm like, oh, they, they, already, they already did it, probably. And you could miss something, and you could miss a window that the doctor needs to see them. So, all right, so we're gonna have them smile, good. Now I'm gonna have you pucker your lips for me. Good, and a lot of times you have to model this, okay? Now I'm gonna have you alternate those movements. Pucker, smile, pucker, smile. Good. Okay, now I want you to stick your tongue out for me. Straight out, good job. And move it from side to side, please. Very good. Now I want you to puff up your cheeks with air and don't let me pop them. Good. Okay, so what I was testing there was her labial seal. Like Tracy said, believe it or not, if you don't have a good labial seal, your pressure system is off when you're swallowing. So that's a good test of that. If you're, if you're barely touching their cheeks and they're, they're losing it, that's a good indication. You may have some difficulties. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna get started. Um, <coughs> now, we have kind of standardized a process for you guys because especially when you're first starting out, it's good to have um, a standardization to it. I remember when I first started, I was like, I remember putting all this stuff in my pocket before I went in and thinking like, okay, I gotta remember to do this. I gotta remember to do this. And you just feel very overwhelmed. That goes away as you continue to do it. It just becomes very natural. But we're gonna follow the standard process for you guys. So what I'm gonna do here, set out all my stuff. Typically how I do this, I like to have my thin liquids here, my nectar thick liquids here, my honey thick liquids here, I'm gonna switch those, and there. My pureed solids here, my mechanical soft solids here, and then my regular consistency solids here, okay? I kind of go through that progression. Um, so we're gonna get our water ready. Now, 
when you first start with thickening things. It's an art, I'll just tell you that. At first, <laughs> at first you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I just made that into concrete. Um, and I don't know what consistency that is. Um, but as you, as you practice, you're gonna get good at it, okay? So what we encourage you to do is the more you can practice with thickener, the better. So we'll just pretend I'm in the patient's room. I, I carry a little lunch box around with me that I have all my materials in. That way, if I'm in there and I see, oh, we may need to thicken a little bit, I have all my stuff. So this is gonna be our thin once again, our nectar thick. Now, you're watching me just like kind of throw this in. Um, I will tell you, we did an experiment with this label to do exactly what it said, and it made it way too thick, okay? So you gotta be careful when you are mixing things. If it doesn't look right, trust your judgment, okay? If it doesn't look like nectar, it's probably not nectar. If it doesn't look like honey, it's probably not honey. So. What I always like to do, I say less is more. Less to start out with. You can always add thickener. Um, and if you do notice it get too thick, you can always add a little bit more liquid. Okay. So what I do after I mix, I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit. And it thickens, it gradually will thicken over time. Okay, so I'm gonna let my honey sit there a little bit. It's probably not right honey yet, okay? But I know I've got a little bit of work to do. So I mix in this. How I always test my nectar thick liquids and my honey thick liquids, I like to see it run off of the spoon. Okay, so just kind of watch it run off that spoon. All right, now I'm gonna show you the difference with thin liquids. Can you tell a difference? Okay, and you can also feel a difference when you're stirring. It just feels thicker, okay? Um, let's see how our honey thick liquids are coming. Mm, not as thick as I would want. So if I see that it's not quite as thick as I want, I go back to my thickener. And another spoonful in. And um, like Tracy said, people are gonna be like, well, what are you putting in my drink? You know, so it's good when you're doing this to say, I'm just getting my materials prepared. Um, so I have everything ready when I need you to, for what I need you to try. Okay, now watch this. See how that looks a little bit thicker than the nectar running off? That's, it's getting, it's more honey thick liquids, okay? So, now, on one of her slides, I don't think we got there yet, she's talked about putting thick liquids, okay? Putting thick liquids and pureed consistencies are the same, okay? So I don't necessarily need to mix putting thick liquids because I'm gonna test it when I test my pureed consistency, okay? All right. So I'm gonna have you try the, a few things for me today. I brought you some snacks that we're gonna try. I'm just gonna see how you swallow. If you feel any of your symptoms that you typically feel at home regarding the food sticking or discomfort or any pain while we're doing this, I just want you to let me know. That way I can compare what I'm seeing to what you're feeling. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you take this in your hand. What I'm gonna have you do is take one small drink of the water and I'm gonna feel your throat. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh, good. I always like to hear voicing after um, they have swallowed something because if for some reason it did go towards the airway and it didn't elicit a cough or a throat clear, if I hear a gurgly vocal quality, that is sometimes indication that the liquid that they just swallowed is on the vocal cords and could be causing that gurgly sound. Okay, Jamie, now what I'm gonna have you do, I just want you to take an average size drink like you would if you were at home. <clears throat> All right. Now, how did that feel? Pretty, pretty normal. Pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want you to take that same size drink once more. 
<clears throat> okay. So, <coughs> that was good. Okay, so typically in that situation, she did it two times in a row. I may try one more time because you do have those patients, especially with like respiratory things going on, COPD. They cough all the time. Okay, so you've got to determine if this is true penetration aspiration or if this is just a fluke thing. So, but if she didn't cough, I would have said, okay, let's take a, let's take a really big drink. Okay, let's, let's guzzle this a little bit. But since she coughed, I'm still gonna be cautious a little bit. I don't wanna, I don't wanna put too much liquid in her lungs if that's what she's doing. Um, but we're gonna try that same size one more time. Okay, no cough on that one. So what do you think I'm gonna do? Try it again. I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> because then I'm like, oh, now she just threw off my theory. I think she was aspirating, but she didn't do it that time. Um, Jamie, what I want you to do is take one really big drink now. <coughs> okay, and we had a throat clear on that one. So what that's, I'm kind of thinking, still leaning towards aspiration on that one. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, a lot of times your nursing staff will think straw is bad at all times if you have a patient with dysphagia. However, some people do better with the straw. So even though she throat cleared on the thin with the cup, I'm still gonna try the straw drinking. Just one drink through the straw, please. And we had a light throat clear, okay. One more drink through the straw. Okay, so we're having consistent throat clearing with the straw. We're gonna move towards the nectar thick liquids. Once again, it's been a little bit since I mixed this, so I'm gonna test it again. Make sure it's still nectar, still nectar, okay? Okay, okay Jamie, I want, this is gonna taste a little bit thicker. Um, it's not supposed to distort the taste, but sometimes texture does. So just take one average size drink for me, please. Ugh. <laughs> I know it's not ideal. Let's just continue to progress through our test here. Okay, can you take a big drink for me, please? I have to do this. We're almost done. You're working really hard. I appreciate it. Okay, so we took two drinks there, no throat clear. So that's already telling me, okay, seems like she's tolerating the nectar thick liquids a little bit better. Okay, now what I want you to do, we're not done yet, I want you to take one really big drink through the straw. Good, very good. Now I almost want you to act like, take three consecutive drinks, like you're guzzling something. I really don't like this. <laughs> And then you'll have some patients that'll be like, I'm not doing it anymore. <coughs> so then you have to think of a unique way to challenge them. And a lot of times I'll say, now remember, I'm just trying to do my job. I'm trying to do what the doctor wanted me to do. And I'll say, can you just work with me for a few more minutes? And most often they will say, sure. Now I have had situations where it's not so pleasant. But So typically in a bedside swallow about, if I didn't get any throat cleaning responses on the nectar, that's where I'm going to stop, okay? There's no really need to go to honey, but I'm going to show you what just, I would do for honey. Just go ahead and move on. Just go, don't, yeah. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, because okay. I want them to get to practice. Okay. Before All right, over. so then we're going to go to applesauce. Okay. And Jamie, what I'm going to have you do, just take one bite of the applesauce, please. Yeah. Okay, so we're watching for a lip seal. We're watching for how long it's taking her to swallow it. So you still wanna have a hand under there for this, okay? Because sometimes what people do is they pocket it in their cheeks and you are you think, oh, they swallowed it. If you didn't feel it, and then you go to give them another bite and you still see it in there, okay? It's like a train wreck in there. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, so it's really good, especially until you get to know this patient, you wanna always have your hand yes. there. Okay, we did well with that. <coughs> now, um, I noticed that you, um, have upper and lower dentures. Do you typically wear them when you eat? Yeah, if I remember. If you remember, okay. 
because the reason I ask that, I have a lot of patients that will wear, wear their dentures out just for cosmetics, but when they eat, they don't want to wear them, okay? Mm -hmm. So you want to do what is natural, what they're going to do at home, okay? Okay, so go ahead and take one bite for me. Chew it up really good and then swallow it. If you can't get any of it chewed up, let me know and I'll let you spit it out in a cup. And usually, I'm, I'm for sake of time, I'm only doing one presentation, but I usually have them do multiple bites. And the last thing we're going to do, and I should have backed up. Before I get started, it's a good thing to ask if they have any allergies, yeah. too. Um, I usually try to do that um, to say, do we have any food allergies? Some people are allergic to peaches. Some people are, so weird things, but it's good to ask. Just want you to take one, just chew that up and swallow it. Get your neck sticky. Okay, now open your mouth for me. <laughs> I know, I'm testing you. Um, but that's something you want to do. You want to look in their mouth after they're done to make sure they've cleared it all and they don't have any residuals that are in there. Um, at the end, so. Jamie, what it's looking like, um, when I'm feeling your throat here, I'm feeling a little bit of weakness, okay? Reduced elevation of your laryngeal structures, and I'm noticing signs of aspiration. What I mean by that is when you were swallowing the thin liquids, um, you had a slight throat clear or cough after the majority of the presentations that I gave you. What that could indicate is that you're aspirating. And what I mean by that is aspiration means when things are that we're eating or we're drinking, are going towards our lungs versus our belly. Those pathways are really, really close together. So we gotta make sure that that's not what's causing your uh, respiratory event. So I'm gonna place you on nectar thick liquids um, until we can do further evaluation via modified varium swallow study. Um, that's under x-ray and I can further explain that later. Um, I typically would explain it right now. Um, so are you comfortable with doing that procedure to make sure that we have evaluated you correctly. Yeah, that'd be nice because I don't really want to drink that. <laughs> yes. So at that point, when she's okay, I go to the physician. I say, hey, we're seeing some overt signs of aspiration um, with the thin liquid consistency. <coughs> she's tolerating the nectar. Are you okay if I do a modified barium swallow study? Um, usually they're always okay. They put the order in the computer and that's where we proceed. So that's a basic swallow evaluation. And if we have time at the end, they're gonna come back and we're gonna mock up another one. But I definitely wanna to get to the point where you guys have time to play with the thickeners because we do have that ready for you to